Hello, uh, my name is Ben Price. I'm from San Antonio. It's uh, August of 2019, and I uh, want to do a little bit of an inf informational session on the differences uh, and similarities between this Fender Frontman 25R on your left, the red, red amplifier, and the Frontman 65R the, uh, on, on your right-hand side. I did a, a video on the similar similarities and differences between the 15R and the 25R, so today we're going to look at uh, two amplifiers with some, some sort of uh, significant differences. At first thought, uh, you might think that the 15, the, I'm sorry, the 25R and the 65R are pretty much the same amplifier. That was the case between the 15R and the 25R. They're really very similar. Uh, the controls are, are almost identical, uh, with the exception of a couple of jacks in the front. And, you know, the 15R is an 8-inch speaker. The 25R here is an open back amplifier with a 10-inch speaker. Uh, so they really are quite similar, both excellent practice amplifiers and uh, no longer made, but you can probably pick them up on Craigslist or eBay for, uh, you know, not a lot of money. The next uh, amplifier in the line of the Frontman uh, uh, series was this uh, Frontman 65R. So again, you might think that, oh, well, the 65R is probably just a bigger, a bigger 25R, and it's not. Um, I've, uh, I'm having uh, uh, some challenges trying to describe this 65R to you, so I may stumble a bit as I go along here, but please bear with me. Uh, I would say the 25R, you know, it has a, has, it's a two, two uh, input, uh, it has one physical input, but it has two selectable channels, a clean channel and an overdrive channel. And on either channel, it has a, a treble, middle, and bass control, as well as reverb. You can see those controls here. There's the treble, middle, bass, and the reverb. There's the clean channel volume. If you press the little switch, which you can't see, but it's right here, then it flips over to the overdrive channel, and, and the normal gain is no longer affected. It's just the, the pre-gain and the volume or the post-gain, and it's sort of the dirty, how much dirt do you want and how loud do you want it, and the treble, middle, and bass still stay effective as well as the reverb. So on a 25R, that's kind of how it, uh, how it works. On a 65R, it's a, sort of a two-channel amplifier, it still really only has one input. It has two input jacks here, but, uh, and I'm not even sure if one of them is for an active pickup or not. Uh, they're probably just wired together. Uh, so on the first channel, the clean channel, the one on the left, it has a volume, a treble, and a bass, and no middle. Uh, not uncommon for some of these Fender sort of mid-size amplifiers. And then if you flip the switch, it's the white, uh, the white switch right here. Uh, then you flip over to these, this channel, and all these controls are now disengaged, and it's completely the... Uh, uh, the equalization and stuff on this side. So again, sort of the drive, control, the volume, how dirty do you want it, how loud do you want it. Treble, middle, bass, and reverb. Reverb is engaged on both channels regardless of which, which uh, channel you have it selected to. Uh, and then they also have a little mid-contour defeat switch here that if you press this in, it scoops out the mids. So that's uh, apparently a really good thing if you're uh, into sort of uh, heavy metal stuff or, or shredding or whatever. Uh, I'd mentioned in the other video that I play in a classic country band. I normally just play a Telecaster through a, an amplifier similar to this uh, uh, front man, a 65R, something in that, in that wattage range, maybe a single 12, depending on the venue and so forth. But that's the kind of amplifier I would normally use. So let's talk about uh, the 65R. Uh, again, it's not made today. You're going to find them as a used amplifier. They're probably in the $100 range. You might pay a few more dollars for it, but you can find a, you can find a clean one for $100 if you look around. Uh, the things that you're going to hear about this amplifier, if you're you know, YouTubing and so forth, is that uh, they're very loud. And, and the, the reason, and they are, well, it's 65, it's the, th the theory is it's 65 watts, and, uh, you know, that's, that's a lot of power, really. Uh, so uh, they're loud because, you know, they have, they have a lot of power in them. Also, and this is probably more important, the volume control on, on these things, and I'll just talk about the clean channel here. The volume control, uh, like all amplifiers, goes from 1 to 10, but it only really increases in volume significantly between about 1 and 3. Once you pass 3, it does tend to get a bit louder, but really all the most of the gain is between uh, off, which is 1, I think. Yes, off is actually 1, and then uh, by the time you get to 2, it's pretty loud. And by the time you get to 3, it's as loud as you're, you're going to be able to take it. So the, the thing you're going to hear is they're really loud, and it's because that, uh, that volume control is not adjusted to, your, to our human's ears. I'm not sure why they ended up with that particular type of volume control in there, 
But, uh, and there, you may come across some people who want to replace that control with a more, uh, a, a more a control more attuned to how we as people hear things. Uh, however, that's, that's the way it is. And second of all, you're also going to hear that when you first turn this amplifier on, you're going to have about a two second hum, and then that's going to go away. And that's definitely true. Let me turn this off. By the way, the power switch on the 25 hours in front here, whereas the power switch on the 65 is in back, they're both open back amplifiers. Both use IEC power power cords, a standard old uh, cord that everything uses. Let me turn this off. Give it a second to be charged there. Turn it back on. I don't know if you'll be able to hear this or not. It stopped. So for about two seconds, there's a, a light sort of humming, and uh, there are kits on the market where you can get we'll fix that and so forth. So um, looking at the 25R and 65R together, you can see that size-wise. They're pretty much the same. There's not much difference in them. Uh, obviously, the 65R is a shade larger. That has a 12-inch speaker. But really, they're pretty much the same size. If you're carrying them around, you know, whether you're carrying a 25R or 65R, it's the same thing. Uh, Weight-wise, again, the 65R is just a tad heavier, but really not much. So if you're thinking, oh, I need an amplifier, I can, I can just kind of drag it around with me. Either one of these is fine. I think of the 25R as being a really nice practice amplifier. The 65R is, is good. Uh, if you can work with it a bit uh, because of some of these sort of idiosyncrasies it has with the volume control and so forth. Uh, because I always, I only play the clean channel with just a touch of reverb, you know, I never use the, the uh, dirty channel. And I'll try to demonstrate that here in just a second. But because I, I get the feeling that the, uh, the 65R has, has an intended audience, perhaps, of uh, people who are uh, going to be doing some uh, you know, he heavier kinds of stuff. So for me, the, the controls really just kind of boil down to these, these three here and then the reverb. All these other things, you know, I don't, I don't use them. So if you're, a, and I would appreciate your input, if you have one of these or have used one and you do use the distortion channel, please post your comments below in terms of how you think that, uh, how you think that works. So I'm going to play a little, uh, a little piece here. I have my, brought out my old uh, PV Stratocaster copy. Uh, it's, the controls are quite scratchy, but we'll see if we can't get that to work. And uh, in terms of the, the tone, what I would say is what, uh, you know, you're listening to this, I, I'm recording this on a flip video, and you're hearing it probably through your computer speakers, so the quality is not going to be very good. But uh, sitting here, there's definitely a more presence with the 65R. It's like it has a, con a, a, a constant presence control turned up to 10, whereas the 25R, you know, doesn't have that. The 25R still has that sparkly kind of Fender sound, and so does the 65R. There's no doubt about it, the 65R has a uh, sort of a brighter, a brighter kind of tone. And again, I'm not sure that'll come across in the video. So let me give this a try. I'm sitting just a foot or two in front of these amplifiers. This PV is a strat copy, is a single coil uh, uh, pickup system, so you may hear some humming. Some of the folks uh, commented in the other videos that there was some humming and buzzing, and there certainly is. That's just because my proximity of the guitar to the amplifiers is, you know, on stage you wouldn't be this close. So it's, uh, you may hear some humming, just ignore that. Here we go. We'll start off with the uh, 25R here. Ugh. See, I got a guitar pick with me. Hey, what do you know I do? Try to keep my neck out of the way. Definitely a Fender sound, uh, easy to adjust, no complication with the controls. I'm not going to do the overdrive on this uh, at the time. If you want to see what the overdrive sounds like, just go to the uh, other video I made, the differences and similarities between the 15R and the 25R. I did an overdrive, uh, a dirty and an overdrive both, a demonstration on the amplifier. So let's try the 65R. I've tried to more or less EQ them similarly. So what I've got is, uh, by the way, on the 25R, I had the 
treble, middle, and bass set to eight, and then volume set, you know, quite low, two or three, or, and the reverb also kind of quite low. Uh, because this uh, 65R is so bright, I've turned down the treble to five, and I have the bass at eight, and I'll turn the volume up here. It, it comes on like right away. So if you're practicing at home, you'll have to kind of get adjusted to, uh, to that, uh, that reality. Let me get just a bit of reverb. Again, I'm struggling with how to explain this or to do a good demonstration. It's, it is certainly louder. It certainly has the Fender tone. You will have to kind of get adjusted to how the controls work, uh, particularly the volume, as it is uh, sort of its own, its own beast. But if you're uh, thinking of playing in a band and you're looking for an amplifier that would be reasonable, again, uh, presuming you're playing something that's a moderate uh, volume level or less, again, classic country would be fine, then this kind of amplifier would work. Uh, it's small, it's easy to carry around, has a Fender tone, and you know, they're cheap. So uh, that might be, a, it might be a good amplifier for you. Uh, again, I can't comment on the, uh, the distortion of the overdrive channel, and would appreciate anyone who has, uh, has experience uh, with that. So overall, uh, if you come across one of these and would like to pick one up, you know, they're a lot of fun to play with. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the old-timey kind of straight uh, amplifier. Let me set this thing down. Uh, without any kind of uh, effects or so forth. Uh, the, uh, the, some of the newer Fender amplifiers, we spin this around a bit. Here's the, uh, the 15R on the left, and on the right is a, a Deluxe 90 DSP. So this is uh, also a, a 112 inch uh, amplifier, and you know, it's 90 watts or so, but it also has built in effects. And on the uh, clean channel, it has volume, treble, middle, and bass, kind of more traditional setup for equalization and so forth. Uh, on the overdrive channel, it looks very similar to this uh, 65R. But it does have a, a bunch of different effects, and they all work fine. Again, if you're just looking to carry something around and uh, you're happy with just using the onboard effects, hey, this is great. Don't have to buy any pedals, nothing, just plug it in and off you go. So that's all I got for today. Thank you very much for sticking around. I know this is a bit of a long video, but I'm hoping to... Uh, to help you kind of understand a little bit about some of the uh, nuances, I guess, between uh, some of these uh, amplifiers. If you have any interest in these sort of this class of an amplifier, you know the Line 6, the 75 watt Line 6, or the Crates, or the uh, Bandits. I have a number of Bandits as well I, that I use quite often. Uh, just let me know and I'll see if I can't do a demonstration on some of these other amplifiers for you. So thanks again for hanging around. Hope you all enjoy the summer. Bye now. <laughs>